Oh, Ray nearly tucking the front. Davies down into the final corner. What a move from Rose. Ray and Sykes at war with each other. Oh, and that's a huge crash from Jonathan Ray. He goes down. The team look on. Some incredible overtakes in this World SBK race. And that's Haslam down. He's out. Disaster for Marco Belandri. A technical problem ends his race. Ricardo loses the front. Davies pushing hard. Oh, and what a moment. And Davies finally finds his way through on the brakes. What a weekend for Kawasaki. One win apiece for both riders. And 100 wins in World Superbike. Lap records were decimated in Super Bowl by both Jonathan Ray and Tom Sykes. The Kawasaki pair laid their claim to the Mizano circuit, but Ducati have brought a couple of special weapons this weekend to defend their home from the green machines. The end of race one will officially mark the halfway point in the season. Can Davies and Sykes close down Jonathan Ray's advantage, or will he head into the second half of the season with an even bigger advantage? We're about to find out. Here we go, an overview of the 4.226 kilometre long or 2.6 mile long Mizano circuit. Marco Simoncelli, 16 corners in total with 10 of them going to the right, including the incredible turn 11 curve zone, one of the most fearsome corners anywhere on the calendar. Then we have six left hand bends as well. We've first raced World Superbikes here in 1991 and this will be the 49th ever World Superbike race here, putting it amongst the likes of Aston Donington Park and Phillip Island. Sector 1 takes us down through to the exit of Turn 5 after the start, finish straight, and Sector 2 is all about Turn 8, the Quersha corner, and setting up for the run through the incredibly fast third sector through Tremonto, down through Curvone, and then into Sector 4, which starts off with Caro, the tight right hand before those two lefts onto the start, finish straight. Jonathan Ray won here in 2016. Can he do it again? Of course, he does hold the race lap record from 2015. Hello and welcome to the Adriatic Coast. It's round seven of the 2017 World SBK Championship. We can only be in one place with the sun that high in the sky and the sky that blue. It is, of course, Mizano at the Marco Simoncelli circuit. Conditions ideal, 27 degrees air temperature out there and the track temperature steadily rising as well. My name is Harry Lloyd in the box with Steve English as always. There you can see a light wind just blowing along this circuit. Hopefully keeping those riders nice and cool as they prepare for 21 laps of all out war here in Mizano. It's gonna to be tough, it's gonna to be hard. Those Kawasaki's, as we said, threw down the gauntlet in Supol when they both dropped into the 133s, the first ever 133 lap times we've seen in World SVK around the Mizano circuit. Markham Landry and Chaz Davies got close to close them in, but couldn't quite do it. There we can see it's all hustle and bustle down on the grid as bikes are just warmed up. Everybody does their last little bit of preparation before we go racing here in Mizano. As we said, it will be 21 laps. That man there is the championship leader and also the race record holder with a 134.720 from 2015. His first year with that Kawasaki squad. And that was when the success really began and it's been nothing but flying high since then. Unfortunately, he was flying high due to a deflated rear tyre in Donington Park in race one, Jonathan Ray. But then he bounced back to fly high and step up onto the top step of the podium and end Tom Sykes' run of victories at home. Indeed, Harry, it was a tyre issue for Jonathan Ray in race one, but uh, Pirelli have been able to confirm to us that they haven't been able to find exactly what caused the issue. And uh, when they compared it to all the other tyres of the same compound, there wasn't anything that they could really pinpoint that caused Jonathan Ray's crash. But uh, speaking to Jonathan the other day for uh, a feature that will be coming up on WorldSBK.com in the next couple of weeks, just about the highs and lows of the season, it was pretty obvious what the low point was going to be, but uh, a season of highs really for Jonathan Ray. Picking up wins by the bucket load and easily leading that World Championship. 55-point lead over Tom Sykes. But this man, Marco Melandri, fourth in the championship, and he's been on the rostrum quite often, Harry, but uh, is he going to be able to get onto the top step of the rostrum today? 
He's starting on the outside of the front row here at Mizano. That is the big question. You did ask him right down there in Park Fernay after Super Bowl 2. Can you win? He seemed a little unsure. But if there was any round where Marco Melandri was going to really push the Kawasaki's and his teammate Chaz Davies for victory, I would have to say it would be here in Mizano, who's always gone well here throughout his career. Knows the circuit very well from his time in 250s and MotoGP as well. So I think that Marco Melandri could certainly be a bit of a dark horse for the race victory. Yeah, Ducati, of course, have always gone well here. Utterly dominant in the 48 races we've had here. 28 times Ducati riders have taken that checkered flag. And uh, Troy Bayless, of course, holds the outright record here with six wins. Jonathan Ray can equal that if he does the double this weekend. Jonathan Ray, four wins which he shares with Max Biaggi. And obviously, after Max's supermoto crash last week, uh, everyone here in the World SBK family and Paddock just thinking of Max. It seems like he's on the mend at least, Harry. Yeah, it does. Max still in hospital after that pretty nasty fall, but it does look like he will eventually make a full recovery. Michael van der Mark there had a pretty strong showing in Donington Park, did the Dutch ride. He was right up there inside the top five for both races, and then in race two, actually spent most of the race inside the podium places and just got taken down a spot by Chaz Davies right at the end. Of course, the number seven charging through the field after running or being pushed wide in that second race. There you can see the number seven Ducati of Davies. If you joined us for Supol 2, you will have seen a bit of an aerodynamic feature go on the back of that bike. There we can see it in this replay. Just look at the rear wheel. That is a lenticular wheel cover, much as they use in cycling. You'll often see it there. Just help the airflow over that wheel and help reduce the drag. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see whether or not this actually makes a difference for Ducati. When they tried running it in MotoGP with Michele Piro here at Mizano last year during one of the free practice sessions, it set tongues wagging. A lot of people talking about what potentially it could have been, but it was just an aero device. And it didn't really offer a performance advantage for Piro, and it hasn't been seen since on the MotoGP bike. Maybe it's different on the World SBK bike. Maybe with the power being quite different on these bikes, it does just change things slightly for them. Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be marginal gains with something like that. You're not going to suddenly find half a second because you're covering the side of the rear wheel. Otherwise, everybody would be doing it. But when it is so close at the front between Sykes, Ray, Melandri, and Davies, you know, even those small gains of, you know, a couple of hundredths of a second here, a couple of thousands of a second there can certainly help. Leon Camia there just trying to stretch himself out a little bit, trying to keep nice and cool before he heads out on track. Camia will be starting from sixth on the grid, so the back of the second row. Camia looked very strong all weekend, was able to actually get a full day's running on Friday, which is a pretty rare thing for the big man riding the number two machine. That MV Augusta team has been plagued by technical issues, but it looks like it's more or less on track this weekend here in Mizano for him. Yeah, plenty of issues through the season so far for Camier and NV, but they've been able to set some pretty impressive times whenever they've been able to have some clear running, and uh, Camier, one of the more impressive riders so far this season, and he's definitely put himself in the shop window for next season. We are hearing plenty of rumours about where Camier could end up for next year, and uh, one of the persistent rumours is that uh, Honda's in talks with him, and uh, that could potentially be a big step for uh, Camier just to go back to a big manufacturer like that. We do see the resources there available at MV being limited. You can see the number 69s all around the paddock and on every bike, every helmet for each of these riders, pretty much sporting the 69 for Nicky Hayden, of course. Nicky lost his life here just a couple of metres from the Mizano circuit uh, only a month ago. Exactly. Very unfortunate circumstances for the Honda team, but great to see the World Superbike and MotoGP paddocks all coming together. Here we see Tom Sykes rocking up with the new, uh, new aero helmet there to help with the, uh, with the slipstream. We do see the shark helmets in MotoGP with that back cowling, but clearly a shark have given him something a little, little special here for Mizano World Superbikes this weekend. As we saw in Super Bowl 2, Tom Sykes, one of the last to actually come into the pit box just 14 seconds before pit lane opened when he sat down in his chair. So uh, as you were saying before, Steve, no doubt he and his team have already made the plan and Sykes probably just taking that little bit of extra time to you know, keep cool and keep calm inside the motorhome or maybe even the back of the Kawasaki truck. Yeah, and uh, the key thing is going to be if he can keep cool and calm when he's in the thick of the fight here with Jonathan Ray today. Sykes, of course, three-time race winner here at Mizano in the past and a five-time pole man. So he knows his way around Mizano 
But last year, if you remember back to it, Harry, he wasn't able really to make the moves on Jonathan Ray, even though he looked like he may have had a little bit more pace than his Kawasaki teammate at various times. Pit lane's just open, so you can hear the rumble of bikes just starting to roll their way down the pit exit here at Mizano. Harry, we've seen, you can see the red t-shirts in the crowd, lots of Ducati fans and lots of Ducati bigwigs here as well this weekend. Yeah, certainly we have Gigi Delaney here, we have Todd Dotsy and a couple more as well. There we just see Jordi Torres, he's actually got a bit more red on his bike. I was chatting to, to somebody and Jordi Torres, the outline of his number 81 used to be orange and now it's red. Uh, not 100% sure of the reasoning behind that one, it certainly goes a bit better with his leathers there. There you can see Leon Cami actually running a really nice tribute to Nicky Hayden on the side of his bike with the American flag. They're a big number 69 and it looks like a portrait of Nicky Hayden as well. So a beautiful tribute there from the MV Augusta squad. There of course is the teammate to Nicky Hayden. Stefan Bridle, really difficult weekend for Stefan Bridle. He's qualified down in the 18th spot behind the likes of Russo and Angelus. So hopefully this race can offer some sort of salvation for the German rider and for Honda because they just haven't really seemed to be making any progress at all this weekend, really chasing their tails with a lot of things. Eugene Laverty said he's been making a fair bit of progress on the Aprilia. They haven't really improved their speed too much, but they have been able to be much more consistent. So we, you know, we saw Eugene Laverty up there qualifying you know, inside those top couple of rows, but then fading quite heavily in the race. So the Northern Irish rider is hoping to be a bit more consistent. Of course, he did qualify in sixth place for the last three races in a row. Right now, the number 50 does start in 10th place, but hopefully that will breed some results. Of course, his best finish of the year has been a seventh place achieved in race two at Imola. Not what you would have expected from Eugene Labby, of course, former championship contender in the world superbike class before he went off to MotoGP. That Milwaukee Aprilia squad is still struggling to get the RSV for working. No struggles for Chaz Davies getting that Panigale to work. He and the Red Machine make such a great team. They have had a couple of falls this year, a couple of crashes, remounts and get going again, which has quite heavily dented his championship challenge. He's third overall in the championship, 185 points. Put him 75 points behind leader Jonathan Ray and 20 points behind Tom Sykes. As we go on board with the reigning champion and championship leader, rolls up into second on the grid, right in the middle of that front row. There you can see just taking the gloves off, you'll probably get a fan, maybe a wet towel around his neck as well. As I said, so warm here, especially in leathers and sitting on top of a motorcycle, which is obviously just pouring heat off towards you. As we see his teammate, Tom Sykes, one of the last ones to leave pit lane. But we do still have over a minute until pit lane closes. So it uh, doesn't look like anybody will miss that. All action down there on the grid. Huge amounts of fans and, you know, all sorts of different media types and, you know, famous people coming here to Mizano to grab a bit of the action, to come watch a trackside. The best way to watch any sort of motorcycle racing. Whatever right, former champions like Troy Corser and Ben Spees here this weekend. Andrea De Vizioso, of course, now a back-to-back a -back MotoGP race winner. He's also apparently kicking around. So a lot of talent coming here to watch this World Superbike race. Of course, we do also have a wild card here this weekend on a Ducati. There's Mengi. He starts 19th, does number 61. Fans who watched last year will remember Mengi and his team. Mengi suffered quite a big hip injury during testing at Phillip Island last year. So he was only able to do a couple of rounds and it was mostly Lucas Stasser uh, on his bike for the majority of the year. There's Davies with a custom helmet. He, Marco Melandri and Leon Camio all running custom helmets for this weekend. Of course, both Camio and Davies aren't from Italy, but they do ride for Italian teams. So in many ways, been adopted by the home fans, the Italian fans, always some of the most passionate that you'll find anywhere in motorcycle racing. Marco Melandri there looking to go over to 20 wins, which would also be Italy's 100th World Superbike win. There you can see pretty consistent for Marco Melandri, a couple of black dots on his checkbook for those couple of DNFs. The last time out in Donington, that DNF was caused by a technical fault 
I believe it was the front sprocket on his bike broke, which caused the chain to drop off. Of course, no chain, no drive for Marco Melandri. No technical issues for Tom Sykes. In race two in Donington, it did look like he would be able to close down his teammate, Jonathan Ray, but unfortunately wasn't able to do it. And uh, on the subject of closing down, Steve, I believe you've got somebody down there on the grid to have a chat to us about what the tyres could potentially do. Yes, Harry, I was just talking to Matteo from Pirelli and he said that the majority of the field all using the hardest rear tyre. But Jordi Torres, how's the tyre situation for you? Yeah, for me it's not bad because we have a lot of pace, a lot of in the last part of the, of the race. And, and we'll see what happens with the other riders. I think uh, that we have a lot of curve of, 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 of uh, our uh, tyres. But we need to see how is the pace or how is the distance or the gap uh, between I and the uh, front riders. You said yesterday that the BMW always works well in the lower track temperatures. It's getting a lot hotter now even compared to the Super Bowl session. Yeah, it's completely different. But uh, anyway, in this situation, uh, our bike, her, her performance is not really bad. Uh, we try to do the best. I know that in the we, we don't do uh, faster laps, but the pace is pretty good. Thanks, Jordi. Best luck. Yeah, so Harry, most of the guys down here are using that harder rear tyre and uh, quite a few of them, the Kawasaki's all seem like they're going to use the hardest of the front tyres, Ducati just using a, a slightly softer front tyre, much as what we've seen through the season so far. Business as usual then, more or less, here is Tom Sykes, just being presented by Ben Spees for the Tiso Super Pole Award. Of course, that was Tom Sykes' 40th pole position in World Superbikes, the new Mr. Super Pole. Did equal Troy Corsa's record here in Mazzano. Certainly, if anybody's going to beat any of those pole position records set by Corsa, you'd have to say that Tom Sykes is the favourite to do that. After a bit of a slow start of the year in terms of pole positions, Tom Sykes has now gotten back-to-back -back poles for race ones. But there is your championship leader, also leading the Pirelli Best Lap Award for the most fastest laps set during the race. Jonathan Ray quite regularly leaving weekends with at least one fastest lap from the two races. And Steve, I believe you have somebody else down there on the grid as well for us? Yes, Ari, just down here with Paolo Chiabadi. And Paolo, big weekend for Ducati. And uh, with Marco on the front row, at least, quite close to the pace of the Kawasaki. Yeah, I mean, uh, Misano is always a special uh, track and a special race for us. Obviously, it looks like uh, the battle is always between the Ducatis and the Kawas. I think uh, Marco especially showed a good race pace, so it's pretty hot now. So let's see. I mean, it's, I think it's going to be as usual between the two Kawas and uh, Charles and Marco. Over the last couple of years, we've seen Ducati really lead the way with aerodynamics, and today we saw Chaz run with that new rear wheel. Yeah, I mean, uh, we try to, you know, to be creative within what is allowed by the rules and uh, sometimes we come up with some original ideas. Uh, this uh, lenticular wheel or whatever you want to call it, similar to what, uh, you know, some cyclists use, uh, uh, it gives some advantages uh, when it's not too windy, obviously. So we tried it. I don't know if we're going to use it in the race, but for sure it shows that we never stop thinking about uh, in a creative way. Thanks, Paolo. Great insight there from Paolo about Ducati and sort of their, their strategy and the theory behind all of their various aerodynamic explorations that they keep making. As we said, Michele Piro about a year ago tested a similar sort of setup with his rear wheel. And I believe it was FP4 in MotoGP here in Mazzano, but it may have been FP3. No fancy back wheels for Tom Sykes. Just the usual. As we heard from Steve, most riders looking to opt for the harder option tyre. And I believe, Steve, you're down there with the reigning champion. Jonathan Ray, honoured by the Queen yesterday with an MBE. But uh, what's the target for today's race? Target to try and win. Um, simple as that. I mean, there's a pace from the front uh, four guys. Pretty strong, to be honest. So there's no, uh, no clear guy with more pace. So just suck it and see really see what happens in the, these first laps and, and try and make a plan from there but the temperature's gone right up now even as hot as it was in the test last week so we'll uh, we'll see it's gonna be 21 tough laps but hopefully we can be there at the end it's been a tough weekend with the track conditions everyone's saying that really not offering the same level of grip as what we had during the test what's been the big issue with it 
honestly, there's not a massive issue with the, the track condition. It's just inconsistent. I mean, one one session is working pretty, it's going with you. The next session it's going against you when the temperature rises. So it's important not to get caught up too much chasing your tail with setup. So, but yeah, basically we rolled out our uh, free practice two setup from yesterday that kind of worked in the hot conditions and under the test. And uh, then we had a, a tire and a setup for the cooler conditions this morning. So we'll see, I think it's going to be a fun race to watch for sure. Thanks Johnny, have fun. A nice simple plan there for Jonathan Ray. Go out, suck it and see. It definitely seems like the weather conditions will play a role in this. Of course, the heat not just taking a physical toll on the riders, but also changing that track condition, making it a bit more slippery. So watch out for a couple of crashes. We've seen turn 16 catch out a couple of people in World Superbikes. And turn four has been the big danger zone, especially for the World Supersport riders. There's Eugene Laverty, as we said, starting from 10th on the grid looking for a bit more consistency from that bike. So hopefully able to work his way up towards the front of the field. We've seen him have some great starts to the race in the most recent rounds, then really, really fade back, especially in Donington when he had some pretty severe tire drop. So hopefully he can keep his pace a bit more steady here. Of course, as we said, really struggling to crack that top five. A bit of a visit from someone from Scotland, it seems. As we go to the Swiss rider, Randy Krumnacker, of course, a bit of a home round for Krumnacker as he lives here in the uh, in the Rimini area. And of course, expecting a baby as well. well hopefully the baby bump does bring Krumnak a bit of luck. Krumnak starts in 11th place, so primed to pick up some more very healthy points. There you can see the Randy Krumnak fan club. It's not too long a drive from Switzerland to get down to Mizano. You can definitely do it in a day. So a fair few of the Swiss fans coming down. Roman Ramos into Q2 for the, into Super Bowl two rather, for the first time today. He was celebrating with massive wheelies after coming second in Super Bowl 1. And he will line up in 12th on the grid, which is his best race 1 qualifying so far this year. Of course, if he can get into the top 9 this race, he will start on the provisionally the top 2 rows on the grid due to that race 2 reshuffle. Lorenzo Savadori, he just missed the cut in Super Bowl 1. So will line up in 13th. Hasn't really looked too comfortable on the Aprilia all weekend. He did manage to finish ahead of Taddy Mikado, which is one job done. But it definitely seems like his teammate Eugene Laverty has a bit of an advantage. Savadori not really taking as much benefit from the one and a half days of testing as Eugene Laverty did there. We see the champion just keeping his focus, an ice pack on the back of his neck to try and keep him nice and cool before racing gets underway. There is Taddy Mikado once again. Really solid performance for Taddy Mikado after missing those first two rounds of the year. Has come back and has been battling for the points in almost every round and actually, more often than not, has been battling for top Aprilia honours, which is really impressive given the support that Milwaukee team get from the factory. The Argentinian rider looking to put the memories of last year behind him. Him and Rafaela de Rosa unfortunately coming together during the Stock 1000 race. Rafaela de Rosa will start this race in 15th after falling in Super Bowl 2. Getting his hair done before, uh, before putting the helmet on. So he's also just wiping a bit of water on himself to try and keep him cool. Rafaela de Rosa looking much stronger on the Altea BMW than he has in those past couple of rounds, of course, De Rosa did come in to replace Marcos Reiterberger from Assen onwards. Reiterberger currently racing in the German Championship, and I believe he'll actually be at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, doing some promotional events for BMW there. Marco Melandri, as we said, gunning for that 100th Italian win and his first win in a good couple of years. Ricky Russo, another home rider, starts 16th on the grid for his 16th World Superbike start. 24 years old, has done a couple of sporadic World Superbike rides here and there. And before he broke his leg last year in Stockthow, he was you know, up there towards the front. So we know that Russo and the big bikes do get on quite well. Just behind him on the grid is a really local rider, Alex DeAngelis, the only San Marinese rider in this World Superbike class. We do have a couple of riders from San Marino dotted about throughout the other championship classes. As we see the see it safety car roll off the grid, which does signify five minutes 
until we will be racing here in Mizano. As we said, round seven after race one, we are officially halfway through the 2017 World Championship. Can the likes of Sykes and Davies close down the gap to Jonathan Ray at the top of the championship? Or will Jonathan Ray walk into the second half of this season after 21 laps with an even greater championship lead? Stefan Bridal there, as we said, difficult, difficult weekend for the German down in 18th on the grid. A hard year to make your World Superbike debut, especially with that new Honda to try and develop. But hopefully towards the end of the year, they will get some new parts, maybe a bit of support from Japan as well. There we can see everybody now just clearing the grid. Only key personnel left down there. We are now just about four minutes away from the race and getting started. There you can see Marco Melandri with that bright blue helmet with a map of Italy on top. His little hedgehog mascot doing various Italian things. Fabio Mengi there, the wild card, just closing his eyes, trying to get into the zone. As I said, he was a full-time entrant last year in the championship, but only made two race starts due to various injuries. So back for a wild card, and there's already talks that he could be back full-time next year with that team. Air for the tyre warmers to come off. We head off for the formation lap, and then head out on to the grid for round seven of the 2017 World Superbike season. What can Tom Sykes do from pole? Can he do as he did in Donington and convert pole to victory? We're about to find out here on the Adriatic Coast. Here we go, welcome to Mizano. It's time for round seven of the 2017 World Superbike Championship. On pole position is Tom Sykes ahead of teammate Jonathan Ray. Marco Melandri there in third, just ahead of teammate Chaz Davies. It is that classic Kawasaki Ducati leading the way. Vandermark up there as well alongside Kamiya. Then it's Lowe's, Forres and Torres. It's gonna be a great fight between those top nine. Watch for Eugene Laudy as well. That Aprilia is a rocket off the start. Krum, Nacker and Ramos also looking to pick up some decent points from some of their best qualifying positions. Savadori, Mercado and De Rosa all eager for some points. Russo, could he pick up some points and score back-to-back -back points for the first time this season? De Angelis out for home. Glory, Bradle just looking for a bit of salvation. Mengi, Badavini and Jezak looking to bring up the rear in this race. 21 riders here, 21 laps of World Superbike action. Here we go, the warm-up lap is underway. Just a couple of minutes until we are racing here in Rimini. Yeah, 21 riders out here, Harry, and uh, just as I said, down on the grid, talking to Pirelli, everyone using that same rear tyre, the vast majority of the field using the SC2 harder compound front tyre as well. But uh, the likes of Chaz Davis and Marco Melandri on the two Ducatis, the number seven and the 33, using the SC1 front tyre, slightly softer development front tyre that uh, they will use. And there we can see, of course, 2017 is the 30th season of World Superbikes, 48 races for the Mizano circuit. Only Phillip Island, Assen and Donington Park have hosted more races and what great races all three of those circuits have already produced this year. Hopefully we'll see that same sort of thrilling last lap action here in Mizano in just a couple of minutes time. As we said, the riders making their way through turn 10 onto that long back finish straight. There you can see 28 degrees air temperature, 47 degrees ground temperature 116 Fahrenheit and old money and Harry you could see down on the grid just all of the riders trying to keep themselves cool with a towel on their neck or a fan blowing in their face and it's going to be a tough race for these riders 21 as we said on the grid and uh, it's a hot sticky day here in Mizano and these guys are really going to be tested over the course of 21 laps here at Mizano they certainly are both bikes and riders will be pushed to the limit in this heat as they make their way through the final couple of corners. Jonathan Ray leading the way on this warm-up lap. He will be rolling up in a second place just behind his teammate Tom Sykes. Both the Kawasaki riders well and truly under the lap record here in qualifying. We could see a very, very fast start to the race. Who can stay with them? We're about to find out here in Mizano. There is your pole man, Tom Sykes. Number 66 back in the number one spot on the grid. Like everybody has made it there. No issues for anybody on that warm-up lap. Always good to see. Visors down, everybody just double-checking. 
everything is okay. The green flag's waving. So the red flag man walking away. Very quick start to the race here. Turn your attention to the lights. The lights go on and when they go out, we will be racing. Off go the lights and away we go here. A great start from Jonathan Ray alongside his teammate Tom Sykes. It's only a hop, skip and a jump down to turn one as Marco Melandri goes third. A great start from Michael Vandermark going around the outside to move up into second ahead of Tom Sykes. But it is Jonathan Ray who leads into turn three now. Yeah, an amazing start there from Vandermark to get through into second. But uh, is he going to be in the way now for Davis and Sykes just to try and get that fight towards Jonathan Ray? You can see Davis down the inside of Tom Sykes into turn four and uh, Sykes answering back immediately but Davis should have a good line to be able to try and get him on the way down the back straight into turn eight as well and it looks like Jonathan Ray is already opening up a bit of a lead over the Dutchman Tom Sykes there now coming under a lot of pressure from Davies as Davies thrusts himself up the inside of number 66 Marco Melandri dropping back a bit from that front row in fifth position now looks like Lowe's has also made a solid start to get ahead of Laverty Krumnaka Torres has dropped back, Torres has dropped way, way back down to 12th place as we go right down there. And in fantastic worm's eye view of those leading five riders as they come trundling through and onto the back straight. Yeah, Harry, you can see there, Vandermark still able to hold off these riders behind them, but good move by Melandri to get down the inside, runs a bit deep, and uh, Sykes able to answer straight back. We've got Ben Spees in the box as well with us, Ben, 2009 world champion here in SBK. And uh, living here for the summer again, and uh, you're here just to watch some of the action. Well, hopefully we're going to have a great race here for you. It does look like Michael Vandermark has closed down Jonathan Ray now. Neck and neck over the start-finish rate. Just under a tenth of a second between them. Watch out for Davies as well as Michael Vandermark slides through into the lead. Great to see the Yamahas up here. You know what it's like to lead this race on a Yamaha. Yeah, really surprising to actually see Michael Vandermark out there. He looked pretty consistent all weekend as we see Marco Melandri now slide through, making up for that slow start. Tom Sykes now back down to fifth place and it looks like Lowe's is coming as well. We saw how consistent Lowe's can be in Donington Park. Looks like he's just pounding out the lap times early on as well. Yeah, and yesterday, Harry, during practice, Vandermark was one of the more consistent riders, said he needed to find a couple of tenths just in his ultimate pace, but once he was into a long run, said he felt really strong and see Stefan Bradl. Another technical issue for the German on that Honda, but we'll see if uh, Vandermark's going to be under pressure on the way into turn 15. And Ben, through this section of the track tightening up in the riders, it does open a couple of overtaking opportunities. Michael Vandermark holding pretty steady in the lead as Chaz Davies now closing in on Jonathan Ray. We saw in Phillip Island when they were a bit worried about the tyres that we did have a bit of cat and mouse, lots of the riders holding off until those last laps. Meanwhile, Marco Melandri with a 135.460, the fastest lap of the race so far. He's closing in on these leading four as well. Tom Sykes and Lowe's, they're not getting dropped either. Pretty steady start for Lavity, bringing Cameo with him as well. Not too much to choose between the top ten at all, really. And Harry, just looking at the times here, you can see, as you said, everyone just keeping a bit of a watching brief right now as Davis tries to get down the inside into turn eight and Jonathan Ray. Good move there by Davis, but everyone just uh, pretty much keeping their powder dry. Davis running a little bit wide, Ray with a look over his shoulder, but uh, everyone not really pushing too hard at this early stages. And just like what we saw in PI, everyone just uh, cruising around in the opening couple of laps just to get a feel for the track. Track temperatures picked up an awful lot since this morning's Super Bowl session as well. And you did hear a couple of riders just complain about the grip level after that session. Yeah, certainly in practice we saw lots of the front guys running pretty steadily in the 134. So this race pace about a second slower than what we we're expecting as Davies there continues to try and close in on Michael Vandermark. Vandermark with about two tenths of a second advantage 
over the riders behind him. The fighting between Johnny and Chaz allowing him to open up just a bit of a gap. We do have confirmation that Stefan Bridal has made it back to the pits. That's almost certainly the Germans race over. Huge disappointment for that Honda squad after that terrible start. Jordi Torres, he's now back up into 10th as we go across the line with the leading group. Looks like Tom Sykes has dropped back a bit, but nothing really much to choose between those top four as Melandry continues to just set some pretty quick times. Lots of personal best lap times coming out. The fastest lap of that leading group was 135.4 last lap from Michael Van der Mark and then Melandry only about a tenth of a second slower. Yeah, ben, just when you're in a situation like this, when you know the tyres are going to be on that edge for a 21 lap race, what's the main thing that a rider's thinking about in these early laps? thought of Melandry since he's come back into World SBK. He really has been able to hit the ground running on the Ducati. There we see Jonathan Raiders trying to close in and trying to keep with Chaz Davies. Davies once again producing a pretty thrilling result in front of his home fans there. So there is Jonathan Wright trying to close in, as we said, on Chaz Davies. But does look like Davies has now opened up a couple of tenths of a second advantage over Jonathan Ray. Marco Melandry hot on his heels as well. Michael Vandermark now with a fast slap of the race, a 135.297 now to try and close, try and open up that advantage, sorry, as that big right leg comes out from the Dutch rider. Still very, very tight between these top four, about a second separating all of them, so about a quarter of a second between each rider out there at the front. If you think back to yesterday, Van der Mark looked like he was struggling at times, at least able to get to the front here and set some decent lap times, but uh, had a crash during uh, yesterday's running here in the FP2 session, but uh, Van der Mark leading the way here, and uh, you can see just uh, the difference in lines there as well, and uh, obviously that Ducati, as Ben said, a lot of experience here with the settings, having tested here extensively, and indeed that test last week, a day and a half here at Mazzano, definitely gave everyone a little bit of a leg up trying to get themselves ready and get their race settings bedded in for this weekend. Most guys just trying just to fine tune things ahead of today's race. We can see Van der Mark still out in front. the riders that impresses you here Ben especially being one of the younger riders on the grid only on a super bike for a couple of seasons as you can see here Van der Mark still leading the way last time around Davis though was a quarter of a second a lap faster than him as well Yep, so Michael Vandermark out the front there. Maybe this little test that they did have before that day and a half is exactly the little boost that Michael Vandermark did need. He did over 170 laps. Meanwhile, Leon Camion now trying to close in on Eugene Lavity. Really good race from Leon Camion once again to stick with the likes of Lavity. You know, certainly another top 10 finish, a top 6 finish even, would be absolutely fantastic for the MV Augusta Rider here at home. As we said, running that special Nick Nicky Hayden tribute and uh, Ben Speed's man in demand here at uh, Mizano and uh, just uh, leaving us now so thanks for joining us Ben but uh, an exciting race here underway and as you can see Eugene Laverty starting to come under pressure from Leon Camier in this group fighting for six they've been dropped a little bit by Tom Sykes in front around about a second and a half trailing the uh, Kawasaki rider now but Sykes left in a little bit of no man's land Harry he's uh, a second adrift of Marco Melandri at the back of that leading group you can see Van der Mark continuing to lead the way here on the Yamaha and Sykes on that green Kawasaki at the top of the screen just starting to drop out 
Yeah, but no dropping out for Jonathan Ray. It looks like he's picked up the pace as well and is now trying to close in on Chaz Davies. We saw him go, oh, big moment there for Chaz Davies as he just gets on the gas. That Kawasaki, that, sorry, that Ducati just flicking him about, probably opening up a bit of advantage there for Jonathan Ray to try and continue to close down Davies. It looks like after a couple of safe laps that Jonathan Ray is now on the hunt. But speaking of hunting, it looks like despite that moment that Davies is now hot on the heels of Michael Vandermark. And we're right about that one one third distance now, Harry, lap seven, that uh, these riders can probably start to push a little bit harder now. And as you can see, definitely with Davis, he started to push a bit harder. You can see that moment as he gets on the gas there in, on the way into the final corner. But uh, Davis starting to push on and these riders, they will start to find those limits a little bit more. Usually you bet in those tires in the opening few laps. And as we saw, the times were quite a bit off the pace of what we've seen else at other times this weekend. But uh, now we're going to start to see riders attack a little bit more. And as you can see, Jonathan Ray, the fastest man in this leading group last time around. But only six tenths of a second, a second separating the leader all the way back to Marco Melandri. Close in this opening third of the race. Yeah, and it definitely seems like Jonathan Ray has something a little bit extra under, un under the braking. It seems like he's gaining a lot on Chaz Davies with that, as you said, Kawasaki did go for that harder option tyre. So maybe getting a bit more stability under the brakes, able to close up on Chaz Davies. But meanwhile, Michael Vandermark, what a ride from the Dutch rider, able to just maintain about two tenths of a second advantage at the front. Davies able to close up a bit, but not really able to make any serious inroads. Yeah, we saw this, Harry, as you said earlier in the year at Phillip Island and a couple of other times where we've had to manage the tyres in World SBK that the Yamaha really strong in the opening stages whenever the pace isn't quite as hot as what Ducati and Kawasaki are able to. You can see the pit board saying smooth for Vandermark and uh, relax there for Alex Lowe's. You can see Lowe's now he's broken away from Eugene Laverty and Leon Camier but uh, two seconds behind Tom Sykes. Last time around he lost another couple of tenths as well so looks like it could be a lonely race for the two British riders there on the Kawasaki and Yamaha respectively. Yeah, it certainly could. Seven laps now complete as Jonathan Ray has a big sniff up the inside. But Chaz Davies can't quite get the move, which opens up the door for Marco Melandri. Marco Melandri can't quite force a way through on the Kawasaki rider. It's going to be another couple laps before Jonathan Ray can launch a move again, I reckon. But he's certainly getting hungry. Doesn't want Vandermark to escape. Doesn't want Davies to escape either. There we see that rear wheel slightly coming around on Davies. That really distinct style of the Welsh rider. Looks like he takes a slightly tighter exit than Michael Vandermark out of turn eight, the Quesha corner. Yeah, Davis was saying yesterday that he was struggling for feeling on that front end, just not quite as confident as he needs. And we always see Davis place such an emphasis on that front end, back in the bike in, but uh, it's all about front end feel for Davis. But right now he's trying to just put Mar uh, Michael Vandermark under some pressure in the lead. You can see as they pitch in towards turn 19 there, the fast right-hander that leads into this final sector of the lap. Davis just starting to up the pressure here and uh, edging himself away from Jonathan Ray in third as well. Yeah, and certainly Jonathan Ray now recovering from that big lunge that he had at Chaz Davies where he was forced to sit up to avoid taking them both out. He has now closed that gap back down to 0.4 of a second. Meanwhile, the gap at the front is still just two tenths between Vandermark and Davies. Vandermark has definitely been keeping his power to dry all weekend. This ride is certainly surprising us and no doubt surprising the Kawasaki and the Ducati riders out the front. Meanwhile, Marco Melandri tries to close in on Jonathan Ray. There we can see the lap difference between Davies and Jonathan Ray. Davies with the 135, Jonathan Ray with the 136s, but no doubt we'll see him back there pretty quickly as well. All four of these riders so close together. Marco Melandri tantalizingly close to the rear wheel of Jonathan Ray's Kawasaki. Yeah, just coming up towards half distance now, Harry, and uh, in that last lap, the gap in lap time between uh, Michael Vandermark at the front, Chaz Davis, Jonathan Ray, and Marco Melandri, all within a couple of tenths of each other. So really heading into the second half of the race, Vandermark still very much in play here, but uh, definitely it's going to be a big challenge for the Yamaha rider to hold these riders at bay. You can see further down the order, we've got uh, an incident there for Taddy McCaddy. He's crashed at turn four, so the Aprilia rider crashing out of this race. He had been... Uh, just in front of Lorenzo Salvadori fighting for 13th, but Mercado gets going again now, and uh, he'll try and salvage something from today's race, but disappointment there for him. He was right behind Roman Ramos, as you can see, just coming back in towards, it's a first gear, right-hander there, you have to hook back a couple of gears, and uh, Teddy Mercado just uh, being caught out there by that, but you can see out in the front, it's still Michael Vandermark leading the way here as they enter into the final couple of corners on the lap. So Vandermark, really solid performance here from the Dutch rider, taking advantage of what's going on around him. Chaz Davis with a mistake on this lap. He's 
lost a lot of ground to Van der Mark. Michaels being able to pull out, probably about a half second lead here over Chaz Davis. Yeah, it looks like Jonathan Ray is lining himself up for another lunge. A very lonely ride for this man here, Tom Sykes in fifth place. Really expecting Tom Sykes to be able to go with that front group. But uh, fairly lonely, 2.6 seconds back and then two seconds ahead of that man there. Lowe's, it looks like Eugene Laverty has now fallen behind Leon Camia. Camia again with a pretty lonely ride in seventh place. Three seconds behind Lowe's and then two seconds ahead of Laverty. Looks like it's starting to spread out a little bit. Randy Krumenacker up in 11th place, so a really solid result for the rookie there. As we ride with Leon Camier, there we go. A nice shot of that special livery in honor of Nicky Hayden as well. Yeah, and Camier just losing a little bit of ground to Lowe's last time around. The gap is two and a half seconds. As you can see, Xavi Forrest trying to get down the inside of Jordi Torres there in the all-Spanish battle, trying to get that big bike stopped. Big move there, big, big move. And he manages to make it stick. The number 12 gets ahead of the number 81, but Jordi Torres straight back there on the BMW, bucking and weaving underneath him. But ah, oh, Forrest cuts off his nose, but then runs it wide. A great battle between these two. And this is just for ninth place. Yeah. And this is why turn eight, nine, ten are so interesting here. A couple of different lines you can take that really do dictate where your bike goes for the next couple of corners. But Fares looks like it's only a matter of time before he's able to make that move stick on Jordi Torres. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see what these two boys can do with Eugene Lavity. Eugene Lavity's pace was a 137.5 that last night. We spoke so much about Lavity looking for a bit more consistency, but it doesn't really look like he's found it this race as he drops further and further down. Meanwhile, Michael Vandermark now is over a half second lead over Chaz Davies as Jonathan Ray looks for a way up the inside on the number seven into turn one. Can he get it stopped? Yes, he does. Davies looking for the cutback, but can't do it. Jonathan Ray defending that inside line through turn Two. Again, you can see there Dave, uh, Davis with the gap opening to Mike, Michael Vandermark. Jonathan Ray just gets down the inside straight away. He sees that Vandermark is trying to stretch out a lead here, and the reigning world champion just tries to get it into second place and start to put some pressure onto Vandermark. Last time around, Vandermark was another two tenths of a second faster than Davis. The gap, eight tenths of a second. It stretched out to 1.1 seconds now after that overtaking move from Jonathan Ray. But uh, Michael Vandermark probably sees an opportunity now. We're into the second half of the race. Now's the time to try and push on if you're Vandermark and uh, try and open that gap because we know that the Kawasaki's and Ducatis are faster. This is where tactics come into it. Is Vandermark going to judge the tyres and be able to open this gap? You can see him behind Jonathan Ray now just starting to try and edge his way closer. The gap's still 1.1 seconds through that second intermediate. Tyres will be the big point as we rapidly approach and pass half race distance. As we said, a one second lead for Michael Vandermark, but has he pushed his tyres too hard? Has Jonathan Ray played to perfection? We saw him start quite slow in those opening laps. It looks like now he's starting to pick up the pace, matching Michael Vandermark's time that last lap, able to get past on Chaz Davies this lap. 1.3 seconds now the gap. Michael Vandermark did, as we said, over 170 laps. Nerves, no doubt, on edge down in the Yamaha box. A big race for them, of course, part of their title sponsors, their home round this weekend. Here comes Jonathan Ray. What was his lap? Jonathan Ray, four tenths of a second slower than Michael Vandermark. Vandermark, the only rider other than his teammate, still in the 135s. Yeah, and this is key for Yamaha. There is some talk about what's going to happen for Yamaha next year. And uh, now this could be one of those results that really does make a big difference for Yamaha and their continued commitment towards the championship and the resources that they put in from Japan. Vandermark trying to stretch out in that lead. Ten laps to go, and Jonathan Ray is going to start to have to lift his pace and try and start putting some pressure on Vandermark. Vandermark, though, continuing to open that lead. 1.3 seconds now for the Dutch rider. And as you said, Harry, last time around, it was only the Yamahas that were on inside the 135s. You can see at the top of the screen, Alex Lowe starting to edge a little bit closer towards Tom Sykes in that fight for fifth. Yeah, meanwhile, Chaz Davies is stuck right to the back of Jonathan Ray. Not much to choose between them. Will Davies try and keep his powder dry and maybe, hopefully, get sucked along to Michael Van Mark or just try and do something at the last corner? We know that in the past, Davies and Ray haven't exactly seen eye to eye, especially with last corner moves. Yeah, and just uh, looking further down the order, Harry, we're just seeing Eugene Laverty's name drop down a couple of positions there. So Fares and Torres have been able to get through on the Aprilia rider. So Laverty now just running in 10th position. And unfortunately for the Irishman, just continuing the form that we've seen so far this season from the Milwaukee Aprilia team. You can see the gap now between Van der Mark and Jonathan Ray. It started the lap at 1.2 seconds. It's still 1.2 seconds. Jonathan Ray's actually lost just a couple of hundreds there to Van der Mark. You can see sliding there from Van der Mark, still being told to keep it calm, keep it smooth. But uh, Van der Mark, as you can see, he's out in front 
and uh, he's only thinking about trying to stay there. Jonathan Ray able to pull in a tenth of a second last time around, but uh, you can see Chaz Davis as well. Similar sort of pace to Vandermark. They're just going to be pushed towards Vandermark in these closing stages of the race. Nine laps to go, and uh, Vandermark. It took until last time out in Donington for Yamaha to get a podium. Are we going to see potentially a race win here for Vandermark? Exactly, Michael Vandermark, six-time winner in the World Supersport class, never won a World Superbike race here. We can see Laverty just being passed by Forres. Nice and clean move there from the Spaniard. He now sets his sights back on Jordi Torres. We know that that BMW does always come strong at the end of a race. Still over a second advantage for Michael Vandermark. It's a bit like an endurance race now, just trying to manage that gap. The heat will be starting to get to him. You know, the tyres will be wearing down. So luckily Vandermark does have a bit of experience with some slightly longer races. Yeah, but unfortunately uh, his Suzuki eight hours experience looks like uh, Jonathan Ray also with similar experience from having raced in Japan in the past, but uh, Jonathan Ray's been able to edge closer on this lap. He's taken two tenths of a second out of Vandermark. So the dream could be over pretty quickly here for the Yamaha team, but uh, Jonathan Ray really on it now, on the way through that uh, fast series of right-handers and uh, just trying to close that gap to Vandermark. And you can see visibly that he's been able to take that lead. And yeah, meanwhile, Ricky Russo, he's entered the pits. It looks like he has retired. Taddy Mercado, he's now moved up to 18th place. It looks like we also had a retirement for Fabio Mengi sometime during the race as well as we go down into the padder box. What's the gap now? The gap down to 0.6 between Jonathan Ray and Michael Vandermark. 0.6 then back to Chaz Davies as well. The reigning world champion is flying. There is Lowe's in sixth place ahead of Cameo. 1.4 seconds behind Tom Sykes. Lowe's was told to relax, told to try and keep it smooth like his teammate. Could we potentially see Lowe's catch and pass Tom Sykes here and secure himself a top five? Of course, right now the grid for race two would be Melandry on pole, Sykes second and then Lowe's provisionally in third place on that grid. And of course Sykes was able to equal the pole record here at, at Mizano but doesn't look like it's been able to give him that kind of advantage in a race here. He's dropped all the way down to fifth and it's been pretty lonely for the Kawasaki rider all the way through this. As you can see up the front though, that gap between Jonathan Ray and Michael Vandermark over the last few laps. Jonathan Ray has been able to take six tenths of a second out of Vandermark and now another tenth so far on this lap as well. So uh, looking like uh, Vandermark's going to be starting to put under a lot of pressure now from the reigning world champion. Yeah, and you saw on the brakes into Tremonto turn 10 that Yamaha really moving around under braking for Michael Vandermark. The Kawasaki looking a lot more stable. And yeah, there we go. Jonathan Ray is now right with Michael Vandermark. Hot on his heels is he. It's going to be Holland versus Ireland here in just a couple of corners time, no doubt. That gap now under half a second for the first time since about lap three. It was a great run for Michael Vandermark. It will be really interesting to see how the Dutchman does rally. He's not being told to be smooth anymore. It's time to grip it and rip it. The team there cheering him on, telling him just 0.3 of a second there. You can see that gap halving over the course of that last lap. Seven laps to go. Lap 15 of 21 here in Mizano. What can Michael Vandermark do? Can Jonathan Ray catch him? Or is the Dutch rider holding something in reserve? As Davies doesn't look like he's able to close in the gap to Jonathan Ray either, sitting pretty steady at 0.7 of a second behind Jonathan. And yeah, you'd have to say that uh, Jonathan being able to close that gap as he has on Michael Vandermark, that uh, Vandermark still out in front. He's led pretty much the whole race so far, but as we get into that final six and a half laps, really the pressure is going to start to mount. As you said earlier on, Harry, he's never won a race. And we look in towards Andrea Davizioso, a man with plenty of experience of winning races after the last couple of rounds of MotoGP. And uh, Dobby back here in the World SBK paddock for the second time this year, but uh, looking on to, unfortunately for the Ducati team, just uh, a solitary uh, podium for the team right now with uh, Vandermark leading from Ray and then the two Ducatis. But uh, are we going to see all this change in the final six and a quarter laps, Harry? Exactly. In those last two sectors, it does look like Michael Vandermark has rallied ever so slightly. Oh, Michael Vandermark goes down. He pushes Jonathan Ray wide as well. The dream is over for Michael Vandermark. Disaster and disappointment. He was on the limit, holding his hands up there, wondering what happened. Likely is up and okay walking at turn 13. That's a pretty rapid crash there. It looks like maybe just touched the inside curving, maybe unsettled the front of the bike and took it out there. Here we go on board with Jonathan Ray to look what happened. Yeah, just uh, a high side there for Vandermark. It didn't look like he hit the curb there, but uh, that uh, couple of right-handers 
really difficult for the riders. And you can see Jonathan Ray still able to hold on to the lead, having around wide, but uh, really difficult couple of corners for the riders. Very fast, eye, uh, threading the eye of a needle there for each of these riders. And um, 14 for Van der Mark, maybe a little bit offline. Maybe there's a little bit of a bump there and it just on Sattler's bike. But uh, great performance by Van der Mark in the opening three quarters of this race. But unfortunately for the Dutch rider, it ends up with no points, but uh, another strong showing of what he can do. But what's going to happen now with Jonathan Ray and these two Ducatis? You can see Davis has been able to get right there with Ray. Is he going to start putting him under pressure? He's kept his powder dry throughout this race. And you can see there, potentially a tyre issue there for Van der Mark that caused that as well. We saw Jonathan Ray have the same issue in Donington Park. Exactly, some big damage there to that Yamaha. Best to avoid speculation until we know. No doubt Pirelli will be on top of that. But right now it is this three-way battle for the lead. That crash from Michael Van Mark forcing Jonathan Ray to sit up and really closing down this front group. Just three, just half a second, sorry, separating all of these riders. Chaz Davies, he smells blood. He's right behind Jonathan Ray. He's looking for a way at the inside. Can't quite do it. Nice tight line there through turn 14 for Jonathan Ray. Can Chaz Davies line up anything into the left hand at turn 15? Has a look but not quite close enough. I was talking to Chaz Davis yesterday and asked him whether or not his run of form at Misano, where he's only had one podium, just whether it's a bit of a bogey track for him. And he said that uh, actually didn't uh, really reflect the potential of the package here in the past, but uh, definitely he's been able to get the most out of the Ducati today. And you can see right there with Jonathan Ray, last time around he was a tenth of a second faster than Ray and there was only a tenth of a second in it across the line, as you can see from the crawler at the bottom of the screen. It looks like Jonathan Ray is a bit stronger through that first sector than Chaz Davies, but Davies still able to stick right with him. We know how fast that Ducati can be in a straight line. There's not much to choose between these two. Meanwhile, Sykes in fourth. He's over three seconds back on this fight, so it's certainly going to be a three-way battle. Don't rule out Marco Melandri either as we ride with Chaz Davies. He's up the inside looking for a way through it. LaQuesha corner can't do it. Jonathan Ray able to just cut across and keep that tight line nice and defensive on the Kawasaki. As Chaz Davies is looking every which way to try and get past the number one machine. That big right leg coming out as they make their way through Tremonto onto the back straight. Slightly wider line there for Chaz Davies. Try and get better line. Try and set up for something maybe through Cavone, maybe into turn 12, maybe into turn 13. Yeah, and you can see through the fast rights, we're coming up to where Vandermark had his crash, but. Uh, Jonathan Ray now starting to put under a lot of pressure from Davis. He's been able to stretch out a little bit of time in that uh, third sector, but you can see taking that tight line on the way into turn 14. Davis able to take a, the more traditional line, but uh, you can see there Jonathan Ray really does look like he's either trying to conserve those tyres or else he's under an awful lot of pressure to try and get that tyre to the end of the race. We do know that the uh, Ducati is on a slightly softer front tyre. Each of these bikes using the same rear tyre, but uh, you can see now it's just a case of who's managed it best in the course of this race. We did see Jonathan Ray have to up the pace to try and close a gap down to Vandermark. So you can see Chaz Davis trying to get down the inside into turn two, not able to do it. But uh, looking now like it's only a matter of time before Davis tries to get down the inside. Will, will he try and move into turn eight again, Harry? He did look very strong at turn eight. The Kawasaki just looks a bit more stable under braking. For me, I think he's going to try something down that back fast part of the circuit. Here we go through turn six. We're about to see if he will try something into turn eight. Like you think, Stephen, of course, the Quersha corner, one of the slower corners on the track. Here we go on board. Now we're off board. Nothing quite there for Chaz Davies. Jonathan Ray taking such tight lines. No way Chaz Davies can get through there with Jonathan Ray basically hugging the curbing all the way around there. Maybe if Davies can carry slightly more corner speed through 9 and 10, then he can set something up for the end of the back straight. Meanwhile, the best view in the house is for Marco Melandri there, sitting nice and pretty in third, within a third of a second as well, ready to pick up any pieces if anybody gets knocked wide. Yeah, Melandri well placed here to move into position to try and take that attack. 100th win in World SBK. But unfortunately for Leon Camier, it looks like he's made a mistake there. He's falling down the order now on the MV. Augusta, he had been sixth, but uh, now just dropping like a stone. So clearly an issue there for Leon Camier in the final three and a half laps. But uh, three and a half laps to go, Harry. And uh, you can see Davis now with so much more corner speed through turn 15, starting to put the pressure on, on Jonathan Ray. And uh, let's see what's able, what the gap is as they come across the line now between the leading three. It looks like Melandri's been able to get ever closer as Davis tries to get down the inside. We saw him last time around try and use a move into turn two. Oh, they're touching there. The boot of Davis was right on Jonathan Ray's shoulder. And he gets pushed back to third. Incredible racing here in World Two Bikes. It's now a Ducati 1-2 at home in Mazzano. There we go. Cheers from the Ducati squad. Jonathan Ray won't be liking that one.
bit. We do also have confirmation that Leon Camia crashed at turn eight and has remounted down in 13th place. We also have Stefan Bridal. He's back out circulating as well. What can Jonathan Ray do? Can he rally after that really tight move to the opening chicane? Marco Melandri had a bit of a look there into LaQuercia as well. Yeah, of course, Melandri always faster down the straights than Chaz Davis. The difference in size definitely giving a big advantage there to Melandri for top end. Melandri, as we said, chasing that 100th win. But you'd have to imagine Jonathan Ray, after being leaned on through turn one, he's going to be uh, keen to get back to the front of this group. So we've got two and a half laps to go. And uh, really anything could happen between Chaz Davis on the number seven, Melandri on the 33, and Jonathan Ray on the number one. You can see Tom Sykes at the top of the screen starting to come under a little bit more pressure in that fight for fourth now, but uh, you can see Melandri, different lines, different approaches, everyone's starting to get a little bit frazzled now, the heat's on, and uh, the red mist could easily come down, Jonathan Ray trying to get down the inside of Marco Melandri, does that on the way into turn 14, runs in too deep, Melandri gets back through, Davis continuing to lead now, with just over two laps to go, you can see the red mist really is starting to come down, Jonathan Ray pouncing down the inside on Marco Melandri, does he run it wide, does Melandri get back through, into second, Melandri across the line, back into second, but Jonathan Ray has the inside line into turn one. Will he try the move that uh, Chaz Davis made in them last time around? He does, makes the move stick, and now he's going to be chasing after Davis. The gap last time around was half a second between Davis and Jonathan Ray. Yeah, that little fight between Jonathan Ray and Marco Melandri, they swapped paint there for a couple of corners. It did allow, as you said, Davis to open up a bit of advantage. You'd have to guess that Jonathan Ray will now be able to try and close in that gap with a bit of clear track ahead of him. As you said, Steve, using that harder front tyre should give him a bit of a boost in these closing stages of the race. Marco Melandri doing well to stick with Jonathan Ray as well. We could certainly see Marco Melandri sucked back up into this leading group as well, but maybe that little tussle is exactly what Chaz Davies needed. With just one and a half laps to go here in Mazzano, we start to build our way towards the, start, the back straight that gap has actually opened up by two tenths of a second. Can Jonathan Ray keep his powder dry in this last set? Do we know how close the Ducati and the Kawasaki's are on top end speed? I'll have to wait to see what they do through the speed trap. Not much to choose between the two machines as Jonathan Ray tries to close down that gap. It looks visually like it has closed. I'd say that gap's at about 0.3 of a second. Yes, 0.272 of a second. It's going to come down all to the last lap here in Mazzano. This is exactly what we wanted to celebrate, the halfway point of the 2017 World Superbike season. Yeah, and the gloves are off here, Harry, between the top two men in the world over the course of the last few years, you can see. One lap to go, there's a group of three in that leading group, but uh, you can see it's all about the leading two here with Chaz Davis leading across the line by two tenths of a second from Jonathan Ray. I love that image there. One of Chaz Davies' mechanics hanging the pit board out, plus zero to Ray. Big smile on the mechanic's face. It's all the play for here. It's not plus zero, it's point zero difference at the second. We know that Jonathan Ray can be very strong, especially through that third sector out on track. Oh, Marco Melandri's gone down as well. The disaster for the Italian rider. His hopes of home victory are well and truly gone. Sykes is now up onto the podium after a fairly lonely race. Hopefully we can cut back to the action at the front. Jonathan Ray is coming. He's going to have to save something for those last couple of corners, I think. Yeah, it's going to be all about turn 14 here for Jonathan Ray. You can see just uh, trying to use every inch of the track on the way out of turn 8, but it's going to be all about the run from uh, the Toronto here at turn 10, trying to get good drive from that, get close to Davis, and then use those three right-handers to try and get as close as he can on the way into turn 14. You can see Melandri's name just dropping like a stone. But uh, that's, he is trying to rejoin, but it's all about these leading two. Is Jonathan Ray going to get close enough to uh, Chaz Davis to try and make a move into the tight right-hander? Those tyres are definitely looking a bit loose for Davies. He's having to run a bit wide there. Jonathan Ray taking a slightly wider line to try and carry a bit more corner speed. A wider line through. Oh, Davies goes down and he gets hit by Jonathan Ray. They both go down at turn 14. Jonathan Ray swings for his bike. Tom Sykes could win this race. What huge drama here in Mazzano. It looks like... Yamaha on for another podium with Lowe's. Torres could be up there on the podium as well. Tom Sykes from being seven seconds back goes on to take his second race victory in three races. Unbelievable stuff there in that final corner. You can see just a small mistake from Chaz Davis. Lowe's gets second and Jordi Torres. Jonathan Ray will actually cross the line in third it looks like. 
and Jordi Torres gets four. So Jordi Torres will line up on pole ahead of Forres. Eugene Lavity, it looks like he'll finally crack the top six this year. So his best ever finish after one of the most dramatic laps I have certainly ever seen in World Superbike. There we see Chaz Davies just getting stretched away, of course. Jonathan Ray did hit him, so we will bring you updates as soon as we know. Of course, the Kawasaki team not celebrating too much after that one. Yeah, we saw Chaz Davis get back up to try and restart, but uh, obviously, once the adrenaline wore off a little bit, just having to get stretched off, you can see the number seven Ducati rider just uh, getting some attention. Yeah, we will bring you updates on that as soon as possible. An incredibly dramatic race there. We saw Melandry go down. As we said, the red mist did come down. Everybody giving it their all in those last couple laps. Those final three laps were won for the history books here in World Superbike. What a way to celebrate 30 years of World Superbike action. There we see Tom Sykes. He's overjoyed with that one. You have to be in it to win it. I'm sure Tom Sykes wasn't thinking after those first five laps that he'd be anywhere near winning. There you can see Melandry did eventually cross the line to pick up a single point and a fair few DNFs with Davies unfortunately falling. Stefan Bridal did eventually finish, but was seven laps down. So, of course, isn't going to score points there. Lowe's now gets a second place, two podiums in two rounds for Lowe's. A bit of salvation for Yamaha, of course. Michael Vandermark with that incredible start to the race was looking so strong and then had that fall. Still not 100% sure what the cause of that fall was for Vandermark. We did see the rear tyre off the rim. But uh, not 100% sure. Big wheelie there from Lowe's to celebrate. As we said, another podium. He waits two years, and then much like buses, two come at once. There's Jonathan Ray. What an end to the race for him. No doubt his thoughts will be straight away with Chaz Davies. We did see them obviously have that war of words in Assen, but since then the relationship has been back to being very, very cordial. There, Jonathan Ray. Not sure if he's stopping the bike because of the damage or if he's off to... Oh, no, he's actually off to check on Chaz Davies. That's great to see that Jonathan Ray is straight away there to check on Chaz Davies. Looks like he's kneeling down to also have a bit of a chat of him. What the mark of a sportsman there from Jonathan Ray. Here we go. Here was that crash. A huge moment there for Davies. And then it looks like he probably just tucked the front in the corner yet. And then Jonathan Ray had nowhere to go. Gets launched over Chaz Davies motocross style there. Nobody at fault there. There's nothing you can do when you're that close in a race. And here we go, another replay of that incident. Davies there straight away holding up a hand in apology. So, you know, Davies certainly didn't have to apologize for that one. Jonathan Ray, as we said, an incredible gesture to go straight over there to Chaz Davies to check how he was. Lowe's there shrugging his shoulders with that second place. There we heard from Lowe's just struggling to shift a bit in those last couple of laps. But despite the struggles, he did get up onto the podium. This man here struggled a little bit as well, did Tom Sykes. But as we said, you have to be in it to win it. To finish first, first you have to finish. Bit of a squeeze there for, for Lowe's from Sykes. Corsa there to congratulate the new Mr. Superpop. And then Jonathan Ray shaking the head. Of course he's not happy about how that one went. You know, thought straight away there with Chaz Davies and just no doubt discussing with his team you know, what happened with the incident there. Of course, be sure to check the World SBK Twitter and worldsbk.com for all of the latest updates on Chaz Davies. We will bring you any updates that we hear after this race. Of course, we are still on air for the World Super Sports Super Bowl session. So we will bring you anything that we hear then. But a good couple of rounds for the Paddocks team. They certainly have the pace to be up there and fighting for race victories, as Michael Vandermark showed. Jonathan Ray there just confirming that he was all OK after that crash. But, you know, clearly pretty shaken up about that collision with Chaz Davies. The medical team was straight away with Chaz 
So hopefully we'll be able to bring you some positive news in a little bit. But what a last couple of lap, laps that was before that fall. There we can see Jonathan Ray pretty frustrated with how that all went. There we can see the fallen Ducati of Davis. Looks like he has been loaded into the back of the ambulance. We can just see there the stretcher that he was on being taken away. No doubt it's off to the medical centre for Chaz Davies for checks. Of course, the best safety gear in the world being used here in World Superbikes. We have all the latest airbag technology, so hopefully that will have helped Davies. And then we do also have an incredible medical team and all the marshals here. Now we do have official confirmation that Davies has been taken to the medical centre for a checkup after that difficult fall in the last lap. You can just see everybody down in Park Ferme waiting to do their interviews. Pretty contrasting emotions inside the Kawasaki box, you're going to have to say tonight. Sykes over the moon to get a bit of a surprise win. Jonathan Ray understandably disappointed and uh, his thoughts will be with Davies. As we said, a, an incredibly beautiful gesture from Jonathan Ray to head straight over to Chaz to check how he was. Marco Melandri, he suffered a fall just before that. It was a dramatic final corner there. Melandri just debriefing with the Ducati crew in Italian. Trying to figure out what went wrong. Here we see a replay of Melandri's crash. We just see him slide across the bottom of the screens. Probably just lost at mid-corner, maybe carrying a bit too much speed. He was able to remount and, as we say, finish in 15th place. So one solitary point for Mark and Landry. Here is our surprise second man, Lowe's. Yesterday that you needed to get out of the bed on the right side and uh, three crashes yesterday, top three today. Yeah, was really lucky then with top three. I think a couple of the main things, hope all the guys were all right because it was really, really tricky in them conditions. I believe Michael's was not all his fault. So he's done a fantastic job all weekend on the side of the garage. So he didn't really deserve that. He was riding the bike really well. So yeah, from my side, I was a lot happier with my pace. Um, I felt like I, even on lap 20, 21, I was sort of doing as good lap times I've done all weekend. So it was it was a difficult race for me. I tried as, as hard as I could. And uh, yeah, you, know, you do have to be there at the end, unfortunately. But I'll take I'll take this podium. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can improve in our genuine speed for tomorrow. But you know, massive thanks to everyone for the support. I've been quite unlucky in, the, in, in a couple of years gone by. So you know, the last few races, I've been really lucky. So uh, I'll enjoy the moment for that. Thanks, guys. Swings and roundabouts for the luck there for Lowe's. As he said, he has been pretty unlucky for the past couple of seasons, but now luck is finally coming back to him. And of course, his teammate Michael Vandermark proved what that R1 can do, not only leading the race for the majority of it, but also setting the fastest lap of the race, a 135.297 on lap four. Still a fair way away, about half a second off Jonathan Ray's outright race lap record. So as we heard from Jonathan and a couple of the other guys on the good conditions, not really ideal. There is Jonathan Ray. Looks like he'll be heading over to Steve now. So here's your third place man. Jonathan Ray, third position. And uh, that last couple of laps between yourself, Chaz and Marco, really did see a, a big fight between each of you. Yeah, um, it was a crazy race. First, my, I was just selling my pace. And unfortunately, Vandermark crash was a, such a strange crash. I'm sure he didn't make a mistake. And then I had I went off the track and then that allowed the, the group to catch me again and after that I relaxed a little bit, Chaz came past and I did everything I could to to mount a last lap attack in the last corner, but unfortunately he crashed and I had nowhere to go and I hit him, but I'm so sorry for this. I stopped with him on the, the slowdown lap and um, seen if he was okay and He's, uh, he seems okay, his back was a little bit sore, but I really hope and pray that he's fine. And really sorry, but I had nowhere to go, so um, yeah, right now I'm just thinking about him. I hope he's okay. Thanks, John. Beautiful words there from Jonathan Ray. As you can see, he was really shaken up by that incident with Chaz. Here it is once again. There you can see Chaz Davies did originally get up 
tried to pick up his bike, but uh, clearly, you know, the, obviously the adrenaline did help a lot for those first couple of seconds, but then the pain did come through there. You can see Jonathan Ray finishing without a foot peg due to that impact, but uh, luckily he did have enough of an advantage over Jordi Torres. There we can see Torres getting bombarded as well. His best finish of the year was so close to podium. Both Steve and I thought that maybe he would be able to do it, but uh, Jonathan just a bit too quick at picking up the bike for Torres. And he, of course, as that graphic says, will start race two from pole. He made a pretty disastrous start to this race, so hopefully pole does help him out a little bit tomorrow. And here he is, your race one winner, Tom Sykes. Tom Sykes, a second win of the season for you, but uh, a win like on, unlike any other. <laughs> well, completely different win, but uh, 25 points all the same. And, uh, you know, for this, we, we have to be happy. I arrived to my limit and uh, couldn't go anymore. For me, it was like the, the tie from the beginning, never never had the push. And um, But, you know, th this is racing and... Uh, that's definitely not not an excuse. The guys in front were riding incredible fast, and uh, all I can say is we arrived to our limit, understood it, and, and stayed there. And uh, you know, luckily for us, in the last laps, um, the other riders around us started to make some mistakes, and you know, uh, some got unlucky. But um, overall, 25 points is, is good for us. And what can I say? Already through the race, I was thinking about tomorrow because our bike needs to uh, just improve um, a little bit. But uh, tomorrow the idea is to join the fight and uh, try and win it fairly. But uh, overall, um, today couldn't have gone any better and um, happy, enjoy the moment, but uh, go and rethink shortly and uh, try again tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Well done. Arrived at his limit and then stayed there. But, you know, sometimes understanding your limit is exactly what you need to do. And Sykes already with a clear plan tomorrow. Try and improve the fight. And as he said, join that front fight in earnest. And there we go, just chatting with Lowe's about what happened with Chaz. Of course, lots of those riders behind wouldn't have seen the initial contact and would have just both seen them down on track. Davies has been taken to the medical centre and as we heard from Johnny, it looks like he was more or less okay. But we will wait for official medical updates. As we said, those can be found on the Twitter of at WorldSBK and then on WorldSBK.com. Here's what the Prelly Best Lap Award looks like. Jonathan Ray still leading that by three points ahead of Davies, Landry, Tom Sykes, and then Michael Vandermark joins that thanks to his fastest lap in that race. Of course, you do get one point for setting the fastest lap in the race. So all of those points there do correlate to the 13 races that we've had so far this year. Another hectic and exciting World SBK race. Jonathan Ray may have a solid lead in the championship, which has now actually shrunk to below 50 points. But uh, as it proved, this championship is still far from over. We now are officially in the second half of the season. Once we go live tomorrow for World SBK Race 2 here in Mizano. That race is set to start at 1 p.m. local time with Steve English and myself on air from about 12.30. So in about 23 hours time is when that race should be starting. Did you see? There we go, those two just having a bit of a chat about what happened in the race. Once again, of course, lots of these riders won't know much of the drama that went on won't know about those great final three laps we experienced with Melandry, Rand Davies all fighting at it tooth and claw. No doubt they'll be heading back to the motorhomes after this to have a watch of what happened there. Still two Kawasaki's on the podium, no Ducatis after a pretty unlucky last lap for Ducati. There is the mayor of Mizano, Stefano Giannini there to present the trophies to Jonathan Ray. No doubt slightly bruised after that the dramatic penultimate corner turn 14, so third last corner 
collision with Chaz Davies. Lowe's once again back on the podium, as he said, down in Parc Ferme. Luck finally going his way after a couple of years of not really having any luck at all. So proof that you should always keep pounding away at it, never give up. And there is the man of the moment, Tom Sykes. He said he found his limit and then just stayed at it. No point pushing over the edge. And he has been rewarded with 25 points. As he said to Steve down in Park Ferme, doesn't matter how you get them, 25 points are 25 points. He's now just 46 points behind his teammate, 276 versus 230 at the top of the championship table. There's a team representative ever. The KRT media manager, always a pleasure to work with whenever we have to set up any interviews or, or video features with Kawasaki. Looks like Sykes is enjoying having her up there as well. Great to see different members of the team coming up as well. Not always just the bosses. We prepare for the English anthem. Three races and two race wins for Tom Sykes as we get set to hear the Japanese national anthem in honour of Kawasaki's victory in this race. There we go, all the anthems ringing out there. You can see Jonathan Ray just deep in thought there about Chaz Davies. You know, we saw them have that disagreement in Assen that got pretty heated. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, motorcycle racing is a, is a very dangerous sport and everybody has huge respect for their competitors out there. And whenever we do have a scary incident like that, you know, you really, you really see that everybody is a, a family here in World SBK. Yeah, you could see the red mess coming down in those final couple of laps between the leading riders. But uh, once we, uh, once we saw what had happened, you could see Jonathan race straight away on the cool down lap over to Chaz Davis just to make sure he was okay. And uh, when he was down talking to us in Park Ferme as well, saying the same. And there's still more to come, of course. Race two starting at 11 GMT time tomorrow. We saw huge drama here in race one and no doubt race two is going to be even hotter as the likes of Lowe, Sykes and Vandermark make those steps they need to launch a sustained challenge for victory. Hopefully Bridal can produce something and turn his season around. There was just the first bit of drama of course that moment for Vandermark opening up and then that battle there with Tom Sykes becoming the somewhat unlikely victor of this race here in Mizano. Just as all of the riders clear the podium there. Jonathan Ray straight off. As we said, Chaz Davies is in the medical center, so we will bring you updates as soon as we can. Of course, as we said, be sure to check the official social media and website of World SBK for all the official updates. It was Tom Sykes who took a victory ahead of Alex Lowe's Jonathan Ray there in third after that dramatic turn 14. In St. Torres gets his best finish of the year and will line up on pole ahead of Fores and Lavity on the front row. Randy Krumnacker set to start in fourth ahead of Roman Ramos and Lorenzo Savadori there in ninth place on the Aprilia. And just behind them, Raffaello De Rosa took his first top 10. Leon Camia managed to cross the line in 11th place after a full at turn eight ahead of De Angelis, Badovini, Jezek and then Marco Landry remounted for 15th after his fall midway through that final lap. Bridal did finish the race, but was seven laps down. So he, Davies, Vandermark, Russo, Mercado, and Mengi, unfortunately unable to pick up any points and will start race two from more or less where they qualified. 
was it's more than just the Riders' Championship. We do also have the Manufacturers' Championship. But first, a rundown of how that's looking. It is Jonathan Ray leading from Sykes Davies. Alex Lowe's now actually stepping up ahead of Marco Melandri. Fores moving ahead of Michael Vandermark. Huge disappointment for VDM after that strong start of the race and uh, a crash that, by all accounts, was no fault of his own. Eugene Laverty in 10th place, three points ahead of Roman Ramos. Bridal still there ahead of Mikado. Savadori in 15th, just ahead of Randy Krumaka to Angela. And Leon Haslam there in 18th on virtue of that one podium he got when he wild carded in at Donington Park. And then in the team's championship, it should come as no surprise that it is KRT leading ahead of Aruba.it Racing Ducati, almost 200 point lead in that championship. So you'd have to say KRT have one hand on the trophy there. Paddy Yamaha ahead of Altea BMW. Kawasaki also lead the Manufacturers' Championship ahead of Ducati, Yamaha, BMW. The fight between BMW and MV Augusta could get interesting, and Aprilia right in there as well with Honda bringing up the rear. And here we go, we'll now leave you with the highlights from a very dramatic race one here in Mizano.